Good morning, everybody, and happy Sunday. Welcome to our very first Facebook Live. I've been thinking about doing this Facebook Live for some time and wondering what would be a good first topic. And it came to me as recently a number of clients have been asking me the same question, which is, does the judge appoint the mediator? And it's a great question, and certainly when you're new to divorce, you don't really know what to expect. And so the short answer is no. Technically, a judge doesn't have the authority to make you go to mediation. But in the Toronto court system, they have a really fantastic program, and that is on the day that you are attending court, you're actually entitled to two hours of free mediation. So it's a great service, and it probably exists in some other courts. You'd have to Google and find out. Uh, but you have to remember, you're already attending court for that day. So what that means is you've already paid your lawyer, if you have one, to prepare for court. They've prepared the documents. They've spent the time. You've paid them for their hour, hour, the hours that they've spent to prepare for your case. And then you may go before a judge, and they'll suggest to you, why don't you go to mediation, which is down the hall in the Toronto court, and see if you can agree to something. So it's great because it's two hours of free mediation, which is really good. But the problem is you've already prepared to attend court. You're already on edge. Both of you have your backs up already. So getting to resolution in those two hours, it might happen, but you might also be a lot less calm than you might otherwise be if you were doing private mediation. The other thing to keep in mind is, although they've given you two hours, and if you have maybe a couple of simple issues to deal with, it's very possible that you can get through them in the two hours. But if you have a complicated issue or you have a number of issues, typically that two hours will only get you through one issue. So what that means is if you found that mediation was helpful for you for those two hours, you would then have to sign up for private mediation outside of court, which you would be paying for. So you have to make the decision do I want to start all over with a new mediator outside of court, which means you have to do brand new intakes. And intakes are basically an interview that the mediator will do with the both of you separately before the actual mediation. And what they're doing is they're finding out what the issues are. They're gauging if you are a good candidate for mediation because there will be some families that are just so high conflict, it may not make sense to do mediation. But so you would have done those intakes when you went to those free two hours in court, but you'll also have to do them all over again when you start private mediation. So you wanna think about is that something you're willing to do? Is that extra time that you're willing to spend? Or for your family, if you've decided that mediation would be a good route, would you rather just sign up with a private mediator outside of court so they can see you from start to finish? Because the other issue is if you build momentum in those two hours and then you're cut off by the time constraint, what happens? You kind of lose that momentum and have to start all over fresh with somebody else. So um, that's kind of the, the answer. And where do you find mediators? If, if you're not going through the court system for the free two hours, there's the body which is called the OAFM, Ontario Association for Family Mediation. That's where I've been accredited. You can go on their website and you can find mediators by location, which is really great. And you can just do a Google search, right? There's lots of mediators out there. Just make sure that they're accredited by a formal body because you want to make sure that they're properly trained for the work that they're doing. You want to get the best bang for your buck. So hopefully that answers your question about how to find a mediator. The other thing I wanted to talk about is a number of my clients that are coming to me are feeling really overwhelmed. They don't know where to start. They don't know who to talk to. They don't know if their lawyer is giving them the proper advice. And in some cases, they're not finding that they're getting enough information from the professionals that they are talking to as to how the process works or what's going to happen. So in those situations, I find that it's really helpful for you to find a divorce coach because what they'll do is they'll sit you down and they'll explain to you, here are all the steps that are in the process and here's what to expect. And here's what to look for. Here are the questions that you should ask. It's, it's obviously really overwhelming when you first start out and you don't know where to turn and you don't know who's telling you the right information and who may have uh, the right agenda behind them. But sometimes, unfortunately, people don't always have the right agenda. And you might be so overwhelmed, you just don't even know. You don't know where to start. So it can be really helpful to speak to somebody who is trained in this area, knows what they're doing, and they also have resources at their disposal. So in my practice, when people are really uh, overwhelmed or maybe they need some counseling or maybe they need 
you know, a good real estate agent because they know they're going to end up selling the house. I have a number of resources and people that are in my team that I can point you to that they can help you with the different aspects of the divorce. So you don't feel like you're just lost in this big sea of divorce and not knowing where to turn, but instead you have the information at your disposal. You can ask me or any coach, you can ask them the questions that you might be afraid to ask a lawyer, or maybe you don't want to spend as much as it might take uh, at the hourly rate of a lawyer because you're just asking for information. Mind you, keep in mind when it's legal information, of course you're going to speak to a lawyer for that. But I also have um, team members of my team that offer legal advice at really affordable rates, so I can certainly point you in the right direction. Just want to make sure that you get the information that you need. Don't be bullied into or, or made to think that you have to sign up with the very first professional that you have come across. Hi Seema, nice to see you. Um, make sure that you do your research and uh, take the time to think about who is the right person to speak to. If you speak to a legal professional or a mediator or any other professional and you don't get the right vibe from them, you don't feel their energy, it's not working for you, don't sign up with them. There are a lot of divorce professionals out there that can help you. You just need to find the one that works for you because in the end you want to be successful. You want to get through this with the least amount of stress. You want to get through it as positively and amicably as you can. You don't want to sign up with a professional who's going to drag it out or make it more adversarial than you need it to be. So just make sure you get the information that you need. And that's our, our first Facebook post. I hope that you got some information out of it. Have a great Sunday.